Hello, thank you for joining me again on Run Level Zero. Today we're taking a look at Peppermint OS 4. Uh, this, this is the, the respin that was just released on November 29th, 2013 and provides many bug fixes and updates that were present in the original release of Peppermint OS 4. Peppermint OS 4 is a lightweight Linux distribution based on Ubuntu 13.04 and their purpose really was to create a kind of a hybrid desktop environment that brings together a traditional desktop with a cloud computing system and I think that's really a novel idea a really good approach uh, according to their literature it says people have been trying to create an effective web-centric operating system for years now. This is especially true in Linux with projects like Ubuntu Netbook Remix, Google Chrome OS, and Moblin all coming to the forefront in recent years. On the downside of things, these systems, though great for surfing the web, lack a lot of the familiarity that people demand from something they use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now that is really, uh, really true. One of the things that I've noticed when you look at your more cloud-based operating systems like uh, just say Google Chrome OS is that they are decidedly different uh, in appearance and in functionality. So much so that a casual user, it, it may be a bit foreign to them, uh, a bit too foreign for their comfort level. The thing that Peppermint has done is taken a traditional desktop layout and added a lot of cloud functionality to it. So it provides a nice hybrid environment. Another of the downsides of a lot of your, your totally web-centric uh, OS's is that they rely on a constant uh, network connection in order to be functional or, or productive. Peppermint offers lots of offline tools. It's basically a standard desktop with a lot of cloud functionality built on top of it. So it's going to serve you very well even if you're sitting on an airplane and, and you know they tell you to turn off all of your wireless devices. So you know you're you're not going to lose productivity in those type of environments. So what do you get with this release note? And this was something I saw that was kind of interesting. It said uh, while conceptualizing Peppermint, we toyed around with a lot of ideas to determine how to best meet our goal to provide of uh, providing a fast web-centric operating system that's easy to learn and effective when put into use. Uh, the end result was a decision to use an interface that stays out of your way and lets you go ahead about your business. Uh, the default desktop environment for Peppermint is LXDE, that's a lightweight X11 desktop environment which has shown itself time and again to be user-friendly, easy on the eyes, and wicked fast. Now if you watch my other uh, uh, reviews on on desktops you know that I'm a fan of LXDE and I really like those fast desktops but what Peppermint's done that's that's really a deviation from the norm with LXDE uh, your common LXDE is really a a uh, a set of applications that run on top of the window manager that provide a desktop experience so with Peppermint what what they normally do with LXDE, the default window manager is OpenBox, which is really fast, really lightweight, and it can even be used as its own desktop environment. But it is decidedly lacking in, I don't want to say visual appeal because OpenBox is an attractive desktop, but it doesn't have as many configuration options and as much eye candy available. What Peppermint did was actually make use of XFWM4 window manager with LXDE and this is really the first time I've seen that done. Uh, XFWM4 is the window manager for the XFCE desktop and I've never seen that used with LXDE before but it, it, they really combine well to provide a great effect. So let's take a look at it and show you Peppermint OS 4 the latest respin. Now I do have it running in a virtual. As with all my virtuals, I have given it uh, two dedicated processors and two gigs of RAM to work with. 
I did have some issues getting the guest editions installed though so it's not providing me a true full screen experience on the virtual that will not affect you uh, when, when you install this on your hardware but I just wanted to let you know what's going on up front so in order to give you a better view I'm actually going to switch to a scaled mode to give you a larger view of the desktop so what you actually see going on here is my XFCE bar on the bottom this is the taskbar for Peppermint alright so that's just an issue with VirtualBox nothing against Peppermint 4 at all so don't hold that against them so what you see when you log in you get a really nice, I like this wallpaper uh, Peppermint provides some really nice wallpapers uh, they usually have a red and a blue version available so you get peppermint coal, peppermint three. There's several different wallpapers to choose from, but you get a a uh, nice traditional desktop layout. You have your one primary desktop with one uh, panel across the bottom. Beginning in the lower right hand corner of the panel is your session manager, where you're going to be able to choose your power off options to shut down, reboot, switch user, log out, that sort of thing. All traditional. There is a calendar and clock network manager, battery monitor if applicable, and your pager and you get two default uh, virtual desktops or two virtual desktops by default rather. As is traditional open windows will be displayed in the central portion of the panel and on the lower right hand side is the menu. LXDE offers a very functional no frills just a logical menu system where all of your uh, applications are categorized based upon their function into sub menus. Under accessories there is an archive manager, uh, let's see calculator, disk manager, your file manager is PCMAN FM, there's a search probably catfish, a search utility going on, screenshot, terminal, and text editor. One of the philosophies behind uh, Peppermint was that they're going to offer the bare minimum of applications installed. They want you, they, they're, they're really providing Peppermint as a platform for you to customize as you see fit. So one of the things you're going to notice is there's not a lot installed by default and that's done by design. They're trying to keep the system as lightweight and functional as possible and allow you to really create the the uh, environment that suits your particular needs. So under games there's a, a small uh, selection. You have 2D, 3D chess, Entanglement, First Person Tetris, Mahjong, and Solitaire. Under graphics there's a document viewer and a couple of lightweight uh, image viewers as well as simple scan utility. Under internet there's a BitTorrent client. Chrome, Chromium is the default web browser application for Dropbox. If you use Dropbox, you can uh, get your Dropbox account set up. ICE. We're going to come back to this. This is a desktop integration for web apps. We'll be right back with this. IRC client. And then there are uh, shortcuts here for online user guide and Peppermint forums. These are really ICE applications. What ICE is, ICE is uh, designed for you to create, it creates a wrapper around web-based applications or websites. So if we go back into it here, look at the online Peppermint Online User Guide. When we click that, what you see is ICE actually uses Google Chrome. You can see the Chromium uh, icon here but it creates a wrapper around this web page so it actually is presenting the URL as if it's a standalone application. So this is pretty neat. Um, they have a few of them in here as you're going to see that you can create a wrapper for say Google Docs if you're a college student and you have online labs you know, uh, areas where you have to go to, to take your tests or classes you can create all of those as standalone apps so I'm going to give you a quick example of how, how to do that. It's very easy. 
So we're just going to launch our Chromium. Let's find a website that we want to, to use, and I have one in mind. So we're going to go to YouTube, right here. And let's say you want to keep uh, run level zero. Ah, if I could type. <laughs> say you want to keep run level zero at your fingertips at all times. Well, here I am. Here's my URL. You're just going to copy that. And you're going to enter it where it says enter complete URL here. Let's give it a name. Run level zero. Where do you want to put it in the menu? Now this corresponds to your menu subcategories here. So by default it goes in internet. So we'll keep it there for now. If you have an icon that you want to associate with that, you can you can do that here. You can search for your icon. Or if the website itself has a particular icon, you can choose to to download that using this button. I'm not going to go through all of that right now. We're just going to go ahead and click create and it's created it. So when we go up to internet now you see run level zero has been added and by clicking run level zero ICE will wrap it that URL as its own application and so you see run level zero. So I think that's pretty handy especially if you do a lot of cloud-based computing uh, like I said, if you're a college student doing your labs or, or that sort of thing, you use your Google Docs quite a bit, this will come in really handy. Now to remove an icon, just click on the Remove tab. You can see all the ones that were uh, pre-installed. You scroll down, you'll see Run Level Zero. Just highlight it, click Remove, and it's done. So you can, if there's stuff in here you don't like, you can go ahead and remove them. But they have pre-configured several of them using ICE just to give you a, an idea of what, what it's capable of doing. So down to Office, you see you have a, a document viewer, a shortcut to Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Drive, and those are all made using ICE as well. Under Sound and Video, you have a media player, music player, looks like it's going to be Gaia Deck, and your sound mixer. System Tools. Uh, it's going to give you uh, just quick access to your, your software manager. Software uh, Synaptic is installed on here as well as the Linux Mint software manager as well as your task manager. Let's take a look at that right quick. Right now it's only consuming about 200 megabytes of RAM. So that's, that's actually pretty lightweight. It's not as light as I've seen some uh, LXDE desktops but that's probably due to the XFCE window manager running in the background. And under Preferences, this is just where you're going to customize your look and feel and, and just administer your settings from here. One thing that is worth noting, you do have a shortcut to Chromium, your File Manager and Software Manager. If we go into the Linux Mint Software Manager, give it your password, it'll open up, syncing the repositories. There we go. If you go to the featured applications and scroll down, you'll see that Peppermint has put together several meta packages for you, and those are just software groups, packs of, of applications that they think may be helpful for you. So there are build tools pack, uh, building and packaging tools uh, for meta pack, uh, build and packaging tools meta package for Peppermint. There's a graphics art pack, a kids edutainment pack, uh, networking pack, office pack for your office applications, and photography pack. So they do offer some packages pre-configured for you, make it a little bit easier to, to get up and running. One thing I did find, if you go to the file manager, PC Man FM offers several tools. One small bug that I wanted to go ahead and show you if you try to open the current folder in a terminal, you'll find that the terminal emulator has not been set. That is easy to take care of. Just go into Preferences, Advanced. You'll see there is no terminal emulator here. 
all you're going to do is type in I don't know what happened there I don't know if that was a bug or not that might have been VirtualBox freaking out for some reason let's try that again go to preferences advanced there we go I'm going to type in LX terminal that seems it was just a bug in VirtualBox and click close so now you've set your uh, terminal emulator um, if you would have tried that without this being set it would have just thrown an error and taken you to the same dialog where you could set the terminal so if you have another terminal if you want to use Xterm or whatever you can feel free to change that in, in those settings just wanted to point that out to you all told uh, Peppermint is an awesome awesome OS and I highly recommend it for anybody they, they are designed to be used uh, by new users uh, they're, they're, they, they, the, the developing team the developers at Peppermint OS have really gone out of their way to create a user friendly and a new user friendly environment I think they've achieved that I, w I would recommend Peppermint OS for a new user uh, especially given how familiar the desktop feels as far as a, a, a somebody coming over from Windows I believe that you know th there is no Linux desktop environment that's going to be exactly like Windows no matter how hard we try there are some that that try to create a specialized environment that's as close to Windows as possible but as far as native just default layouts of, of a desktop I think LXDE really comes closest uh, with XFCE being a, a close second uh, so if you're a new user maybe you have some older hardware you're looking for something to to meet your everyday needs peppermint may be right up your alley uh, I would highly recommend you give that a try please let me know what your experience is with it uh, if there's another desktop you want me to review please leave that in the comments below thank you for joining me I hope to be with you soon for another video